The guillotine is one of the nastiest submissions in all of jiu-jitsu. It's also a personal favorite of mine, and during this video, you're going to find out 9 different traps and ways to set up the guillotine so you can hit them more often in your rolls. Before we get too far into the details, let's look at the 9 guillotines that I'm talking about. Guillotine 1 is a personal favorite, we're going for the front head snap into the guillotine. Guillotine number 2 is tricky, and it's when we have back control and we want to force them into a guillotine. Guillotine number 3 is when I can do a hip in sweep, switch it into a guillotine to get the tap. Guillotine number 4 is a good deep half counter, when they come into us, we hit them with a guillotine. Number 5 is great when they resist our elevator sweep and then of course we're going to hit them with another choke. Number 6 is when I can do my secret bottom side control guillotine that you have to watch to understand. The next one is after we hit a sit out and they're very hungry to try and take our back and of course we're going to choke them out for it. Then we use the Marcelo guillotine to counter the shin guard and we can force them into a bad position from a good place. And of course, we need to release some pressure and then bait them into a guillotine. But if you want to guillotine black belts like me, then you're going to have to watch the entire video instead of just that intro to fully understand the techniques. After watching this video, you have a lot more setups in your game and I hope you can apply them in your everyday roles with people at your gym. We have to start off on how to do the grip, but I'm only going to talk about it with a little detail because I already have a whole other video on how to do that exactly, which you should definitely watch on my channel. Most of these guillotines use my famous shallow grip, unless I state otherwise on the move. I want to make sure that I have my thumb high in the neck, and when I go for the guillotine, I like to have the arm in so I can control the posture. I grab my other hand, but I don't move the thumb, I want to keep it compressed the entire time as I shove my elbow down on the back of the head to force the tap out of my partner. It's very important that the elbow comes down so they can't pop their head out. It's also important that the thumb is going into the artery because we only have the choke really applied on one side. The first guillotine trap is our front head guillotine, and this requires that we have a good snap and we want to force our opponent down so they want to bring their head back up because this is standard muscle memory for most people. When we're in the front head, we want to make sure that we have our chest above their neck so we can bring them down with a lot of weight. This will make the snap a lot easier, then we can use the same snapping hand to bring our thumb down across the neck onto the carotid, bring the other arm in over his arm, and then we can lock up our grip and start applying the choke. Because you have a lot of weight coming down so quickly, it's very likely they're going to roll as you hit the guillotine which is great for us because it's a nice finish and we end up on top. Notice my partner's head. As I come in and I go for the roll, I make sure that his head is stuck to my ribs. This allows me to compress my chest into him, making the choke even tighter and there's no way he'll be able to pop his head out. This guillotine is pretty easy, so let's go to a harder one that I stole from Gary Tonin. The back control guillotine is great for putting somebody in an uncomfortable position then forcing them into a guillotine either by their choice or by yours. Step 1 is that we obviously need to control their back but we're also looking for a belt line hook. We can push off of their hip to get a deeper belt line hook then we'll bring our arm around. We want to slip our arm under our leg and grab onto our hamstring or whatever is available to you. Notice that I'm on my side because this is going to create a lot more pressure on his neck. We then want to start rolling over our shoulders because we are forcing him into the guillotine on this one. As we roll over the shoulders, we need to stop halfway through our second roll, then we can apply the choke by using a gable grip. The other option is that my arm and my hook are stopping him from rolling to the left, so he has to roll into guard towards his right. As he rolls into the guard, he's going right into the guillotine whether it's arm in or arm out. And if you're more into the anacondas, this position is great for transferring to the bicep and then you can choke them out. Don't sleep on this back control. It's great for holding somebody in one spot and you can very easily tire them out, force them into dealing with your arms and forcing them into a guillotine. Trap 3 is pretty generic but definitely good to add to your arsenal. We're going to hit this from a hip in sweep when they give us resistance and then we want to scoop back on our butt, wrap up the neck and get an easy choke. Anyone can do a hip in sweep, but it is important how we react once they resist with some pressure. As I come into a my opponent, I want to make sure that I scoot far back on my hips. If I can scoot back, this is going to elongate his neck and it'll make it really easy for me to grab the guillotine and throw my leg over for the submission. Bring your leg under their shoulder so you can lock up the guard if you prefer control, or go over the shoulder if you want a quick submission and to land up on top. As long as you remember that your hips have to get away so he doesn't stack you, this should be a pretty easy guillotine to finish and you can definitely add it to your game. Rolling with opponent to love to put their head in for a deep half are always very fun to roll with. It's a competition to see if their deep half is better than my guillotine, but they always need to put their head in my hip, so I feel pretty confident. When our opponent comes in for the deep half, we have to make sure that we can check their head with our hips. We don't want to get rolled over immediately, so we need to create a strong base. We can even frame against their head if we're worried that they have a very strong deep half game. With that same hand, it can come off the head then slip down to his crowded artery as we bring the hands together and we push our thumb into his neck. We want to make sure that our elbow comes 
down so we can press his head into the choke and also break his posture. It's crucial that we have a strong base so they don't sweep us over, so I bring my back foot up and then I can push forward into him. I want to compress with my chest, but I also need to keep some weight on my butt so he's not going to throw me over if I go too far forward. Once we apply the choke, they're going to think twice about going to deep half. Not everybody uses the hip in sweep, but a lot of people love to use the elevator sweep. So let's look at a counter to their counter when they decide to resist with the elevator sweep. A dead giveaway that I'm thinking about the guillotine is when I attack the head instead of looking for an underhook. I want to try and sweep them over, but he decides to readjust his head, so I shove it to the side and then I can force the guillotine on him. It's important that we attack the top of the head because this will give us more leverage over the neck. Once they decide to readjust their head so they don't get swept, this gives us time to overcorrect their head motion right into our guillotine, and we can set it up with another nice shallow grip. Just make sure that the same hand that first attacks the head is the same hand that's the choking hand, so we don't have to move our hands around too much. Trap number six is when we have an arm and guillotine, but they still manage to pass our guard. And this one is extremely fancy, and I think I invented this one, so I hold this one close to my heart. As we're falling back for the guillotine, our opponent manages to pass our guard. Because of this, we're going to throw in our butterfly hook, then we're going to reap over the leg with our other foot to capture them. As with the other shallow chokes, we need to compress everything and wing our elbow down to finish. The footwork is very important and has to be done quick because they're going to be trying to avoid your legs. We need to bring our butterfly hook in and extend it enough that we can bring our other leg in as well. Then once we have them locked, we can finish the submission. This choke comes on extremely quick, so if done right, you should get this as a response. Holy shit! Fighters! Trap number 7 is another awesome one and also a wrestler killer, so if you're getting beat up by wrestlers, you should definitely learn this one as soon as you can. We hit this sit out either from the turtle or the wrestler's referee position. As we go for the sit out, we want to make sure that we peel their wrist, so if they go to try and capture us, they need to use their other arm. When they use their other arm and they drive forward, they're going directly into the guillotine and it makes for a very slick transition into a choke. As long as you can make enough space where they feel like they need to run into you, you're going to set yourself up for a nasty choke. Trap number 8 is right from the master of guillotines himself, Marcelo Garcia. This is my go-to when somebody wants to grab my leg for the shin guard position. As they go to hug our legs, we need to make sure to push our knee forward to make a little bit of distance. Now we have enough space that we can throw our hand in right under the chin onto the Adam's apple. Marcelo Garcia likes to use a fist in this position, so feel free to play around with the grips. Since we're standing above them and we have so much strength, we can use our hand to grab the back of their head and pull it down into the choke. Just like with the deep half one, we want to make sure that we have a strong base for success. The last trap is that we want to have a lot of pressure on them and then we're going to release pressure and put them right into a guillotine. This one only works if you can actually create pressure, so I put him in a cross face and I shove my shoulder into him, making him want to escape. Then when I release pressure, he's going to drive right into me to get out of this position and I throw him into a guillotine. Giving them the underhook helps sell this move really well, and if you can rotate towards the head, it'll make it so they won't go towards the shrimp and they'll always try and drive into you instead. So there's all 9 tips, and if you appreciate the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It'll really help me out, and if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm always willing to help people that have questions with guillotines. And don't forget, if you want great jujitsu gear, check out my link in the description to get some for yourself. Thanks for watching.